We're taking you live now to Freedom Park in Pretoria, where uh, something very interesting uh, linking to our history is happening. Broadcast equipment used by Radio Freedom during the dark days of apartheid is being handed over to South Africa. And of course, Radio Freedom uh, helped ANC exiles living in various parts of Africa to find out information, uh, to share information. Uh, very interesting. And just, uh, I remember, Francis, it was uh, you and I who were uh, on the program when uh, our colleague Bulelani Philip uh, was in Madagascar and uh, was reporting on how the country saw this as an important step to continue, continue forging ties. And it's really significant in the sense that it, 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 it paints a picture of how Madagascar mm. shielded uh, those, uh, you know, who, who, who fled South Africa, were exiled uh, in Madagascar, and how the means of communication they used to, to, to talk about the suppression that was taking mm. place in South Africa. So this is a very significant moment uh, for both countries at this stage. Let's take you live uh, there now. You can see uh, Balek Ambete is on uh, the podium at this stage. I'm sure uh, we're also expecting the Arts and Culture Minister, Natim Tetwa, to also uh, join uh, those uh, uh, celebrations that are taking place there. And he will highlight, of course, the significance of this all-important equipment and what it signifies yeah. between the two countries. Let's go live there now know about what I have to say. So when I got another, yet another message this morning uh, about the speech uh, for tonight, I said, please leave me alone. I'm the one who was plunged into radio freedom on arrival in Tanzania. I was told you will live in this flat and within walking distance was the office of the African National Congress, and you must report there tomorrow. And I started the very following day broadcasting for Radio Freedom. It only starts to make sense now when I think back. And earlier on, I don't know whether these comrades are, are, are here, those who were interviewing me earlier in the afternoon uh, to try and gather the experiences of various uh, comrades who were broadcasting from different locations uh, for Radio Freedom. Uh, I started them at my interactions with Ubab Mabida in Maputo. In a nutshell, what Mabita told me, Tombazan, we are not allowing you to go to Angola, which is where I told them I wanted to go immediately. He said to me, the ANC leadership has a right to determine the direction of its members and its cadres, and we will, as a leadership, take the decision of where you are going. I cried. Wasukuba mapita wangjelu kutangati bruela kengil ayin. In ironing his pants, I forgot about my tears. Shortly, a week or two later, I was on my way to Dar es Salaam. Yafige Dar es Salaam. As I already said, I was given leadership in Fiela Babu Mendi, Mendi Msimang. The comrade who was leading us, our unit there, was Comrade Pet Lichalo. We called him Pet Lichalo. He was the younger brother, Tom Sibina. One thing you had to do, you had to know that it was up to each individual to do research and keep informed about developments at home. Because we didn't get newspapers in Dar es Salaam directly from South Africa, we used to get the news briefing which used to be put together in London by Abu Jill Marcus. 
and it would reach us a week or so later. And it kept us informed about developments back in South Africa in various sectors. I got allocated a trade union activities. And of course, the women's sector, because I also got to be active in that front uh, very soon thereafter. The ANC was such a machinery that I believe South Africa is yet to write about the efficiency of the ANC in exile under the leadership of Oliver Tambo, who had been dispatched by the ANC to go and start the external mission outside South Africa. The ANC was organized in such a fashion that the departments we have here, Ulumen, we already practiced outside how to run them. What are the issues of satisfying the needs of your people? <coughs> what was fascinating was how OR kept an eye on every center where Radio Freedom was broadcasting from. On one occasion, he came to Dar es Salaam to address us. That little unit that was there, broadcasting from there. To leave a certain South African leader alone. Because we were busy attacking that particular leader. Usase Kona. And, you know, it's amazing how you learn lessons over time, you know. What, what Mama Peter said to me, that the leadership will decide your fate, will guide you, and it has that right and responsibility. So you will listen and you will do as you are told, as you are guided. Very important lesson. OR comes and he tells us, you must know that many South Africans are listening to you in the country. So the things you say, they take to heart, they take to mind, they take very seriously. Now, you will think you are saying something great you are being helpful and powerful. But watch out. Because you might be messing up the plans and the program and the activities of the ANC on another front. You know, we sat there and we listened and we were thinking, you know, the way you, you know, you, you feel good, Mosmao, I take out a person you think is an enemy target and therefore is the right target to attack. What? Or stop it right away. Well, it's for historians to write history. I'm just telling you what we lived through in Radio Freedom under the leadership of Oliver Reginald Tambo. We had the facilities that had been offered by the government and the leadership of Mwalimu Julius Nyerere. And so we used to go to Radio Tanzania 
where we had the facility to broadcast as Radio Freedom. And that's where I met a Tanzanian who was later to become a head of state, Benjamin Mkapa. I was asked a question earlier in the afternoon. How do I think it came to be that without training, we were all plunged into these situations with our political consciousness, the policies and guidance of the ANC on an ongoing basis. We connected the ANC for years with the people of South Africa. And the question was, these who were hosting Radio Freedom, what influenced them? And as usual, my answer was a rather long-winded one, taking us back to the very formation of the ANC, that we have always been an internationalist organization. We have always, when Pete Slicker Isaka Seme and even John Langalbalele Dube, their consciousness was enriched by the experience of being students all over the world and coming across people of their age groups and Charlotte Matoike, people of their ages who were also coming from the colonized countries of the globe. And together they grappled with the issues and the problems of their peoples through that time. And even our internationalism our understanding that for as long as there are people who are not free, we cannot regard ourselves to be free. And that was the approach of Mwalimu Julius Nyerere about the fact that as Tanzania, although they had themselves attained political freedom and were self-governing, they did not feel they had finished their job for as long as countries of Southern Africa were still fighting for their own liberation. And so it was that Mualimu hosted a whole lot more trained personnel in Tanzania at certain points than his own trained soldiers in his country. But he felt strongly that it was his responsibility to make sure that the people of the South are as free as the Tanzanian people were. Why? Because to start with, and let's come back to this truth, comrades, the boundaries that determine these so-called countries of ours were not determined by us. That is the truth. I know the positions we took, and the SOR was there, and the discussions that led to the formation of the OAU. It is Europeans that set and carved up areas, geographic areas all over our continent, and called them countries. And we came and we fell along and kept marching for convenience, for ease, for peace, whatever else. I don't know whether we've finished that discussion personally. Because I don't think we are unanimous as Africans about that matter. Of countries whose recognition is so important to us that from time to time there's eruptions of something called xenophobic attacks on one another here within our country, which is in the south of Africa. Because of the recognition somewhere in our psyche that is very deeply wounded that these people come from different countries. I don't know about that. It's an inconvenient truth 
but it's an issue we've got to deal with because otherwise we have not finished the debate on the national question for as long as we have not yet grappled with some of those issues. So this moment of getting back to that time, that moment when O.R. Tabo led us and opened up facilities for us all over the globe, possibilities for us to map our way back home. When through him and his leadership, we started friendships that in fact enabled us to build the biggest formidable body of opinion against backwardness, which we were faced with in the form of apartheid back here in South Africa. We formed the anti-apartheid movement. And it was very strong. Today, our kids are being told we listen on radio not to go and vote not to vote for the ANC, even if they go and vote. And I want again to endorse the view that says, let us reinstate a facility that will enable us to talk as we used to talk on Radio Freedom, talking to our people about issues that... A former Radio Freedom broadcaster, Balek Ambete, of course, was the National Assembly Speaker. She had uh, Francis been uh, uh, deployed uh, to uh, Tanz Tanzania, uh, but she says she cried because she wanted to go to Angola to be deployed mm -hmm. there, that get information from the ANC's London office and broadcast uh, that material. So it, 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 a significant moment indeed mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the history of South Africa. So this was this liberation uh, radio station, Madagascar, handing over the equipment. So this is taking place at Freedom Park in Pretoria tonight. And I found it interesting she was speaking about xenophobia. Yeah. Uh, again, looking back at the countries that supported ANC exiles, uh, that came up earlier, Amnesty International saying it's worried even now about the rhetoric being used by some of the politicians ahead of the upcoming elections. We'll take you back a little bit later. Nati Mtetwa, the minister, uh, expected to speak as well. For now, we take a short break.